Ken Engel's exclusive coverage of uh, Oracle Open World 2012. This is theCUBE, our flagship program. We go out to the events to extract the signal from the noise. I'm John Furrier, the founder of SiliconANGLE. Joined with my co-host. I'm Dave Vellante of wikibon.org. We're here with our good friend Gary Orenstein, many time CUBE guest. Uh, Gary, welcome back. Thanks for having us, gentlemen. <laughs> Appreciate it. You Great had a rapid here. fire uh, segment. We only had a short time at VMworld. Uh, you were on the Cube at a short time, but it was short and sweet. You really knocked well, it out of the park. That's nice, short and sweet, <laughs> right? Everybody likes that. So Oracle promoting real performance here. So give us the two cents on your opinion of Oracle's uh, whole flash vision, because you guys at Fusion are, are crushing it and leading the market. Yeah, well I think the good news is everybody's recognized that the classic infrastructure that we've had previously, largely based on mechanical disk drive, isn't enough to cut the mustard, so to speak, with today's data workloads. And you've seen everybody, both uh, Larry Ellison, and then I wasn't at the keynote this morning, but I understand uh, Tucci Joe Tucci classic. was talking a lot about flash memory, so it really is to some extent uh, a broad recognition that this is an imperative for dealing with today's workloads, and uh, it's just great to be at a show like Oracle Open World where we see so many customers who are pushing the boundaries of big data, small data, every size data and various configurations and looking for ways to do more processing more quickly but also do it with less infrastructure. So that, that's a you know, big theme is we want to increase the performance but we also want to shrink the data center footprint. I mean, nobody wants a bigger data center. Everybody yeah. wants a smaller data center. You know, you must love it when companies like that, Ellison, Tucci, you know, big execs stand up and essentially validate what you're doing. Uh, it was interesting to hear, I don't know if it was either Tucci or Jeremy Burton talked about, I think it was Jeremy Burton, in 2008, they shipped the first enterprise flash drive. Yeah. And I tweeted, <clears> yeah, <throat> right around the same time that Fusion I.O. was yeah, I going to market with its you know, I PCIe. saw I saw your tweet as I was and, coming in this morning. And I say that only because at the time that EMC put that enterprise flash drive in, we said, wow, this is going to change everything. EMC landed a haymaker. Yeah, yeah, Fusion IO, that's kind of interesting. Hmm, then we learned more, that's really interesting. But it's somewhat nuanced. Yeah. Um, but you guys are really changing the way in which people think about flash, but it's hard to get people to, to It's change. hard, you know, it's different, and in any, technology market, enterprise, even some of the web market, which the web market does move a little bit more quickly, well, sure, but yeah. not overnight. Um, but the enterprise market certainly takes time, and I think we're at a stage now where people, uh, there's enough uh, success stories and enough customer momentum and enough people have deployed flash memory in innovative and successful ways that uh, you know we're, we're, just, we're just seeing this continue to grow. Um, I think the interesting thing now is that you know, customers can have a choice of servers they want to buy, they can have a choice of the deployment method. You know, we can, we have customers who deploy Flash in the server uh, as local storage, who benefit for that maximum amount of acceleration where the data and the CPU are right next to each other for the lowest latency transactions, the highest amount of throughput. We have customers that use Flash memory in conjunction with their existing storage environment to do caching so they can retain the best of the data management tier combined with the best of a performance tier. And then more recently, we introduced the uh, Ion Data Accelerator software, which allows customers to take flash memory, put it in a server, but then share that as a shared resource with other servers. And so now, any which way that customers want to consume flash memory, they have that at their fingertips, which is just, again, another accelerant to the market in general. So Gary, so a lot of, as, as everyone's racing up to catch up to Fusion I.O., because you guys are pioneering the flash area, obviously EMC is moving, like, pedaling as fast as they can. Uh, so the demo's on stage, we got Jeremy Bird's going to come on later. He's uh, on deck here. Uh, Oracle with their moves. Um, how do you guys look at that race? Are they catching up? And what are you guys doing right now to keep that distance uh, ahead of, ahead of yeah. the pace? Well, we think we're, we're ahead in terms of the product portfolio. One of the important things is we really believe that customers should have a choice of the hardware that they deploy in their environment. And we've worked very hard with our OEM partners, folks like HP, Dell, IBM, Cisco, Supermicro, NetApp we recently added as a partner. Mm -hmm. Um, and so we want customers to be able to deploy high performance configurations, but with their choice of their favorite server. And so that isn't always the case with some other options in the market. Uh, often customers will, will have to stick with one single solution. Sometimes it's proprietary and do doesn't provide a choice of options. So you know, we see it as an important element of our company and our product portfolio to give customers that choice. Choose the server that you want to deploy, add Fusion IO memory, 
turn that server into the personality for the workload it's addressing. Should it be local storage? Should it be used flash memory for caching? Should it be flash memory as a shared resource that you can go across your network? Um, but always have that flexibility. So, so we had Brian Bulkowski on yesterday from Aerospike, formerly Citrus Leaf. Um, yeah. Really amazing company. I tweeted out this morning, you know, hot startup to watch. Um, these guys certainly have an awesome uh, path. Um, but we had a lot of people uh, talking to me last night saying, hey, what was he talking about that Fusion IO connection? He had talked about, he had a meeting with uh, uh, Mr. Flynn and they talked about the two databases. Yeah. Um, how does that, those guys fit into sure. um, well, Fusion and what was that <laughs> dynamic that he yeah, was referring well, let to? Me, let me abstract that question a little bit let, uh, to talk about the software development kit activities in general and I think specifically the example that Brian was referring to. So when you're managing flash memory, you have to keep track of the data and the placement onto the physical chips. There's an inherent uh, organization that you have to do. The technical term for that is called the flash translation layer. And so we've been doing that in our products for a long time. Essentially, you know, customers have a piece of data that they want to place and we keep track of placing that on the, uh, on the flash memory product. Now, that is essentially a, a data translation layer, a little bit of a database, if you will. And so if a piece of software on top of an IO drive is also doing that same kind of, I have data and it wants to go somewhere, and then I, you have two mappings, so to speak, two organizational constructs. And what we're doing with efforts with companies like Aerospike and our software development kit is trying to collapse those layers so that we're, we're operating in a, a more integrated fashion. And so instead of having two steps to go from what the application wants to do down to the physical media. Maybe we can shrink that to just one step. Now, what's the benefit for doing something like that? Well, it means that the application developers can write less code. Uh, it means that they can rely on the uh, Fusion IO products to do a considerable amount of the heavy lifting, so to speak, so they can be more application-centric, and we can be more uh, centric in providing them some of the underlying services. It can uh, increase the performance, and again, by it fits with our whole strategy of trying to make things more simple. By removing some of the layers, just like in uh, introducing our product, we removed some of the antiquated storage protocols. Right? We don't need those layers anymore with flash memory. We want to treat that like a memory, not like a disk drive. Same thing comes when we're working with companies like um, Aerospike doing these new data stores. Let them focus at the database tier uh, and we can provide some of those underlying services. So, so when you oh, remove... Hold on, I got to ask one more question. Right. So, so is there confusion between Fusion, Oracle Fusion, and Fusion I.O.? I mean, it's a legitimate <laughs> question because it's Oracle, legitimate Fusion... Well, the Fusion is their middleware, right? Yeah. So, you know, it's, it's a different product. Uh, there is Oracle Fusion middleware, where Fusion I.O., Fusion but if somebody gets it confused... I, I think you might get the better end of that, that deal. That's all right, you know, I mean, <laughs> we won't complain about that. <laughs> but it's a good point, I'm glad you noted it. So you talk about how uh, you've essentially remove the, the, the need to go through what Pauli Nist of Intel calls the horrible storage stack. Yeah. We love that term. Yeah. Um, so you've, you've created that innovation, but there's another piece of that too, which is that application developers have to take advantage of that. Correct. Um, and that's where your SDK comes in, because you can update us on the traction that you're getting there. I mean, this really is a, a land grab for the developer community to yes. actually start writing. And yeah. to the extent that it happens, you know, it's just a, a bigger rocket ship. Yes. And, uh, but it's, you can't just throw it out there and say, no, okay guys, go. Yeah, yeah it takes so, work, and, and, you know, and we were fortunate uh, yesterday to hear from Brian Bukowski at, uh, at Citrus Leaf and the folks from Couchbase, who we've also talked about publicly. Uh, there are a number of others as well, and uh, for folks who are interested in the program and the uh, developer activities around the uh, software development kit, uh, they can go to developer.fusionio.com as a starting point. Um, but we are seeing a tremendous amount of interest as people sort of uh, wipe the slate clean, everybody knows that there's opportunities to take advantage of regarding the use of flash memory, particularly in using it more like memory than using it like a disk drive. And so we're working through a number of different uh, areas there. Another area that uh, we've spent a considerable time with is something called Atomic Rights in conjunction with MySQL. Uh, and recently we had some news from Percona because Percona's been doing a lot of work here and trying to include that. Uh, in the, in the uh, software that they uh, deliver as well from a MySQL perspective. Atomic Rights, very simply, you have multiple pieces of data that you want to persist simultaneously, all together or none at all, a way to keep your database tightly uh, cohesive and coherent. And so with disk drives, 
you know, the database would have to write twice to keep everything in sync and in case there was an issue and just the disk drives aren't capable of doing all this stuff. But with flash memory, we can do an atomic write all at once. All those pieces of data can be persisted simultaneously and guaranteed. So the benefit of that is there's less code that's needed at the database level. There's faster performance uh, because of that. And then also, in the case with flash memory, we're writing less to the drive. And so that's going to extend the life of the drive. So. Gary, so, so if I may, so, okay. so prior to the Sun acquisition, those would have been, that would have been music to Oracle's ears. Right? Mm -hmm. They would have hopped on that, said order of magnitude, better performance, make life easier for you know, database yeah. people. And so, where is Oracle in this? I mean, they're not hopping on it, right? I mean, probably the same true for Well, I can't comment on, on Oracle strategy. You'll you know, maybe have uh, Larry coming on the show Yeah, well, we have him on He's later, coming John after his keynote. <laughs> Talk to you after the keynote. Right after the keynote. We'll <laughs> yeah. ask him. But, you know, uh, but we are seeing uh, a lot of interest from the people who use Oracle products. We are seeing, we, we are doing but, work yeah. with the MySQL community, which is still a vibrant and important part of this whole world. So there's a still a tremendous amount of opportunity. Yeah, okay. So my question is on the market. So one year later, last year at Oracle Open World we were here, describe to the folks what's happened in one year from your perspective. You're out in the trenches, obviously the market's been growing very, very fast. What dynamics, what kind of notable trends can you share with the folks out there that, of things that have happened in the industry that uh, they might not have read about or, or be aware of? Yeah. You know, I don't know if there's any major, singular, uh, dramatic change. I think there's a couple of things that are becoming more well understood, as we mentioned at the beginning of our discussion. The just awareness of flash memory in general. Uh, you find people who are less, um, you know, who are, are more savvy about what's going on, who know that there's various options in place. You know, I think on the uh, Oracle side, we continue to see people who will take advantage of built-in tools to the Oracle database uh, software stack, things like ASM, the Automated Storage Manager, so they can take advantage of flash memory and organize volumes just right within the database, using tools built into Oracle like DataGuard for replication, that again, is just built in, so it's very simple to do, very, it's very simple to do sophisticated configurations with Oracle and a ver variety of deployment methods and Fusion IO memory. It's, uh, and, and a lot of it is just right out of the box. So I got to ask a startup question because you've been in a startup, you've been part of, you know the whole startup scene, especially in, uh, in Silicon Valley here. Um, we were talking earlier about networking with Lee Doyle, ex IDC analyst, uh, about networking. How it takes a lot of money to start a company. Well, storage now, same kind of thing where you know, do a startup, you cost a lot of dough, but Flash is creating a lot of opportunities. So what's your observation around startups that are doing well in this new world? Because there's the old way and there's the new way of storage. Right. You guys are doing deals with everyone. You're seeing a lot of action. Um, if you can just kind of describe things that you've seen people doing that are very successful as a startup, whether it's product, their approach, their architecture. Right. You just share some, right. some uh, perspective. Well, one, one thing I want to mention about the storage market, which is a place where I've spent a lot of time over my years, is things don't happen overnight in the storage market. And you know, it's important to remember, and what I'll call, at least in my tenure in the industry, wave 1.0 of the storage startups, these array companies that all were birthed and acquired within similar time zones. So we had uh, time range. Uh, That's called the bubble. That's called the bubble. Equalogic, <laughs> three par, Isilon, data domain. Avamar, you uh, can throw in You know, they were all, in, you know, all those companies, there was this wave of, of acquisition, but those companies had spent 10 years in the trenches. And storage successes do not happen overnight. Yeah. Now, I think we're in a similar uh, scenario where we're seeing a lot of folks pop up on the radar who are doing new types of storage systems. I think the interesting ones are those who have said, I'm not going to treat flash memory just as a disk drive. I recognize that this is a different medium that it has many positive characteristics that are totally unlike disk drives, and I want to create a system that will take advantage of that. And we do a lot of work with storage system companies like Nutanix and NextGen and Kaminari. Nutanix is going to be on later who, today. Who integrate Fusion IO products into very successful systems. Um, and so I think the, the, the secrets uh, to success there are going to be those who recognize that there is an opportunity for 
a twist on the conventional architecture. But again, it won't happen overnight. It does take time, and we're seeing the, already some of the successful ones break away from the pack. So you've got yeah. props, I see. Yeah, well, this but, is uh, a, an example got? of our uh, IODrive 2. This is a life-size, but it's a thin one. That's what's the more interesting little, angle. Yeah, it? it's a cardboard <laughs> cutout, but we're giving these away. <laughs> in the booth. You know, it's, a, it's important to hold it and recognize that something so compact uh, and so small can deliver the performance of what formerly would be required in a full-size rack of disk drives. I mean, one Law, flash man. memory device can deliver the power of thousands of disk drives. And so, sometimes, you know, when you're at a show with people, it's important to say, hey, you know, this is all it takes. Fantastic. So now, um, this is a new product cycle for you guys, right? Yes, well um, we introduced so that uh, late last year yeah. and, uh, and that's going great. And then you know, more recently, I mentioned earlier, we're uh, working on a lot of software products, both uh, caching software and then this new ION data accelerator software for, for the shared storage model. So, do you consider yourself a software company? Sure, yeah, I mean there's software all the way throughout. I mean VSL, which is going back to that, how do you place data and, and organize it logically to physically, on the device, our virtual storage layer, which acts as that flash translation layer, has been at the core of Fusion IO products since we started shipping products in 2008. And so that's a very battle-hardened uh, piece of software. Mm -hmm. And then we're now coupling more software capabilities on top of that, primarily to give customers ease of deployment. Again, use the product in server and benefit from the local storage access and the speed and the low latency. Use caching to integrate with your existing storage systems. Uh, a lot of work going on with NetApp from the caching perspective as one example. Their products are a great fit uh, with ours because they also use a log structured file system. And so, you know, when you offload some of the read activity, fantastic performance from those systems. Again, or the ION model of use it as a, a server-based flash SAN, so to speak, that you can be shared across different products. So when you look back, I don't know, to today to let's say 10 or 15 years ago, you had fast storage, fast spinning disk, which is yeah. sort of an oxymoron, and you had slow spinning disk, and you had tape. Um, and I'm, I want your opinion as to when you look forward 10, 15 yeah. years from now, you look back, but so, we've seen tape just sort of disappear as a primary backup medium. Yeah. That's gone, right? I mean, it's mostly disk-based backup now. Um, what do you see as that hierarchy? What's it going to look like? Is all active data going to be on flash? Is all data going to be on, on flash? Is disk just going to be for for backup and data yeah. protection, what's well, your Well, view? one thing I've learned is it's, it's, you never want to predict the death of any media. And medias come and go, and, and that's okay. You know, there's nothing wrong with that, and you know, we don't necessarily need to get sensationalist about declaring the <laughs> death of X, Y, and Z. Even newspapers don't die. Even they don't <laughs> die. Um, but I do think we are now seeing a, a well-recognized uh, uh, scene of separating the performance tier from the capacity tier. But here's an interesting twist. In this race for the performance tier and the race to process more data and the race to serve more users and the race to capture every last click in some kind of big data Hadoop configuration because we don't know when we might need to analyze something out of it. In the race for all of that, we're just generating more and more data. And so there is a symbiotic relationship between the performance tier capturing and measuring all of the activity and the capacity tier needing to retain that, whether that be in a classic storage system from the likes of a company like NetApp or in a newfangled system using HDFS or similar. So, so that I think is on the horizon. And I want to tell you about you know, what, what I see with it. It's really what our, our customers see. And the customers that we see who are deploying uh, Fusion IO in these real-time environments when they're processing their transactions and their application, they don't want to leave the motherboard, right? That's what they say. When I'm processing, when I'm doing my business and my CPUs and my application are trying to serve my users, I don't want that CPU to have to leave the motherboard. And so they're moving to this scenario where they want to be able to process everything at the application level, in memory, in real time, but then also have the retention and the data management, and that will most likely be a, a heavily disk-based infrastructure. Okay. Yeah, great to have you on theCUBE again. You guys are doing great, Fusion IO, leading the charge. Uh, going back to uh, VMworld 2010 with uh, you guys private and then go public and now continuing to push the envelope, bringing the software development kit in, truly making it addressable and scalable. Congratulations. 
Okay, we'll be back with the cube right after the short break.